This worked really well last time, so let's keep the ball rolling. Hi friends, welcome or welcome back. We are here today to basically get my act together, at least in a crafty sense. I did a video like this a couple of months ago when we were heading into summer and I was feeling pretty overwhelmed by all the stuff that I had coming towards me. I took out all my projects, I took out my computer, and I sat down and I made a list with you all of everything that I needed to do, and I made a plan of how I was going to attack it. And it really, really helped. It made me feel good, it made me feel like I got all of the ideas out of my head, and I had a plan, and I could move forward from there, and I actually stuck to the plan pretty well. It has been an incredibly productive summer. Of course, Things had to shift a little bit here and there, some other things cropped up, some things had to get put on the back burner for a little bit, so I didn't completely stick to the plan. It's not like every single thing that I mentioned in that last video has been checked off and is done and dusted. You'll see that that is not the case. But I felt really good about everything that I got done, and I felt really good like being able to check off all of the little things. So basically what I did was I wrote down all of the big tasks that I had to get done and then I separated them all into much smaller tasks and it felt so productive to check everything off of my list. Now today we're just gonna sit and talk. I'm not gonna show you my computer like I did last time because I have added some personal things uh, for life and business stuff to that list and I just didn't feel like um, you know, going through and trying to filter things out and cover stuff up. You don't need to see the computer. If you really, really want to see it, you can go check out the last video or you can let me know and I'm happy to show you, but I just figured we would chat today. So we are going to divide this up into three sections. I need to finish what I've started. I need to make some plans for designs, and then I want to make sure I assign some time for some fun. So today is going to be strictly focused on making. The only businessy part of it that's going to come in is in terms of designs, but everything else is going to be just knitting, crocheting, spinning, that kind of stuff. No real life entering the chat today. Let's get into it. All right, finishing what I have started. The first and largest project that I have in this category is my Allison cardigan. Now, I have shown this on my podcast a few times. This needs sleeves and the patch pockets. And um, I've just been putting it off. I've just been putting it off because at this point, it's kind of big and um, I've needed a lot of portable knitting lately, and I've needed a lot of knitting that I don't have to think about. And while sleeves are not hard, um, I just didn't want to have to focus on my decreases and all that kind of stuff. So I really, really need to get this done. I want to get it done so that I can wear it to Rhinebeck, which shouldn't be hard. I have plenty of time, although I do have some travel between now and Rhinebeck. But I think I can do it. It's large yarn, large needles. I definitely think I can get it done. I am using, by the way, my own hand dyed yarn uh, in the colorway Let Your Taste Decide. I'm holding a DK weight and a lace weight Surrey together and it is so squishy uh, and I love it so much and I just need to sit down and pick up the sleeves. <sighs> I need to do that. That my goal is to at least get one sleeve picked up and started and hopefully maybe halfway done this week. Um, yeah, I still, I'm, I, I'm very mobile lately with what I have been doing in my day-to-day -day life and so I really need portable knitting but I really want to try and focus on that this week. Now the next things you're going to see are all lingering things from my last video. And um, I have touched one of them a little bit, 
And two of them, not one bit. So the first thing is my Brioche Adventure by Jonathan Tello. This has been a lingering whip forever and a day. I am using uh, Long Dog Yarn, a Princess Bride sock set and mini skein set. I have, since the last time I filmed one of these videos and since the last time I showed this to anyone on here, I have done one more section. So the last time I showed this, I had stopped after this blue section and I did add in one more yarn. I have finished one section and I have even wound up, what, what am I doing? <laughs> I have even wound up my yarn for the next section, but I, I have not been in a brain space where I can handle brioche right now. Um, it's just been too much for my brain to process at the moment. So goodness gracious, I want to get this done. I, ugh. Don't let me take this into 2025. It's, it, it cannot happen. Don't let me do it. I need to get this done. I love working on it. It just requires a bit of focus and I have not had that to give in the past couple of months. Next up, I have two things that I haven't touched at all. So we're gonna talk about them really quick and then move on. And um, you know, we'll, we'll get to them when we get to them. First is <laughs> this pair of socks that I have shown several times and they have never changed. <laughs> they have never changed from where they have been. Um, these are a slightly modified version of my Amber Dextrous socks, which was my very first ever pattern that I released. And this is made with a really cool yarn, but um, from a dyer that does not die anymore, so you cannot get it. Um, I don't know what my problem is. I don't, I don't know what my problem is. I do know what my problem is. My problem is that I have to do, I've decided, I was stuck for a very long time trying to figure out what kind of heel I wanted to do on this. I've decided I want to do a heel flap and gusset. I haven't done a heel flap and gusset in a really long time, so I have to remember what and like look up what I like to do and what my preferences are. Um, I also have to do some figuring out with that because I am doing, this has a 60 stitch circumference as opposed to my normal 64 stitch circumference. So I want to try and make the gusset, the heel flap and the gusset like a little bit deeper so that I have more room in my foot. So I need to figure out what I want to do. Basically, I'm at the point where I need to make a decision and uh, therefore I have stopped everything. <sighs> I'll get back to these soon, I swear. I swear, I will finish them one day. One day. And then next up, we have a, um, a spin on my lovely little, I gotta cover my eyes, my lovely little Bosworth um, spindle. This is some fiber that I got at Rhinebeck last year um, from Lyman's Sleigh, Bell, Lyman's Sleigh Bell Farm. And it's lovely. It is Corydale. I have been spinning it on my Bosworth spindle. I still have so much left to do. I have already, this is my third, like, filling up my bobbin, or my spindle for the third time, so I'm almost, I'm like maybe halfway through. So it's just, it's gonna take a really long time. And there's a part of me that's like, MC, do you wanna just do the rest of it on your e-spinner? But then another part of me is like, no, you should finish what you started. So we'll see. We'll see. But now I'm thinking about how I got this at Rhinebeck last year and how it's almost time for Rhinebeck this year and that's pathetic. Those are all of my active works in progress, kind of. You'll see in a second why I say kind of. Um, but those are the things that I'm really actively working on. <laughs> that's a lie. I'm not actively working on the ones that I haven't touched in months. But you know what I mean. 
they got to get done. They got to get done and we can do it. So let's talk about some design plans for the next couple of months and what I'm hoping to get done and or started by the end of the year. Okay, the reason I said those were kind of all of my works in progress is because I actually started another one today, but it falls into the design category. And this is a new design that I am starting. Um, it's not much. I mean, I just started it a couple hours ago, so it looks like nothing right now. And don't even try to figure out what is going on. Um, it, it's, it doesn't make much sense at the moment, but it is... Um, something I'm excited for and I can't wait to get it done. So I'm glad I got that started today. It's been on my to-do list for a couple of weeks now. And um, I'm glad that we are moving along. Um, this is kind of <laughs> my um, Be A Pepper colorway. This was a, an oopsie pan. It is, it is Be A Pepper, but it is um, slightly more saturated than the um, actual colorway because I spilled a little bit of dye. So um, I just figured I would keep this pan for myself. And my original plan, uh, I've mentioned in a couple of other videos that I wanted to use this yarn for a pair of thick beachcomber flares by Brie of the Little Wolf Knits. And um, I kicked it up and I was like all ready to go. And then I looked at the pattern and I realized I don't have enough yarn for my size in these, in these like oopsie skeins. So, whoops. Uh, so obviously because it is like, I spilled a little bit of dye, I'm not going to be able to like recreate how much dye I spilled. So I can't match this and make more skeins for those pants. So I decided to pivot and make this new design out of it. It is working up beautifully. It's, there's not much to see right now. Not much to see, but I'm very happy with it so far. And I'm excited about this little change of direction that we're going in. Um, then, next, I have a lofty goal for myself. Hang on, let me put these needles away because I'm stabbing myself. <laughs> okay. I have a lofty goal for myself and that is to make my first ever garment with my hand spun yarn. And this is the yarn that I want to use. I just finished this spin recently. This is um, basically like, it's a three ply, two of the plies are Rambouillet, one ply is BFL. And I wanna try and make a garment with it. Although I'm a little, little, little bit nervous that it might be a little scratchy because of the BFL. But I think I'll be okay. It doesn't feel that bad. I don't know. Anyway, point is, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to make something with my hand spun because I'm still learning how to figure out, you know, like, the yardage that I get and my wraps per inch and stuff like that because this is not a perfect you know milled skein of yarn where I can say I am getting 463 yards per fingering weight skein of yarn you know it's not it's it, it's not as simple as that you know this is the wraps per inch say it's pretty much a sport weight but you know, there's a margin of error that has to be accounted for. So I do actually have two skeins of this. I just only grabbed one to show you today. And I also have been feeling very like, I can't figure out a pattern that I want to use for this because it is special to me and nothing out there feels good enough. Um, or like exactly right, like exactly the vibe that I'm looking for. So here's what I've decided to do. And this is a lofty goal that I'm setting for myself. And who knows if I, if you like never hear me mention this again, then let's just not talk about it. Okay. Who knows if I will ever follow through on this, but 
I have some of this yarn, which is Manos del Uruguay Marla. And it is so pretty. And this is hand spun. Um, it is, yeah, so it says like, I, I mean, I can't read it, but it says no two skeins are unique. This skein was made by someone. Um, and it's very cool. And I was thinking, I have very slightly more yardage of this than this. And I was thinking, well, MC, you could design something with this, with the Marla, which I've been wanting to do for a while, actually. And then you can make another one of it with your hand spun. And so then you can work out all the kinks with a yarn that you care about less. So if you have to frog or like, you know, do something different or you want to change the shaping or whatever, you're doing it with the yarn that you, that means a little bit less to you. It's still a gorgeous yarn. It's amazing yarn, but this has my blood, sweat and tears put into it. And this doesn't. Uh, so, so thinking of working on a design with my Marla and then doing a second sample in my own hand spun. Only problem is I cannot decide what I want it to be, what kind of silhouette I want, what I have, I have some ideas and nothing feels right yet. So we'll see. I'm going to let that kind of keep floating around in my brain and see if I can decide what direction I want to go in for these. And then I do actually have two more design things on the horizon that I will probably be starting, if not finishing before the end of the year, but they are in their beginning stages, like still figuring out yarn, still figuring out stitch patterns, designs, talking to people about the designs and stuff like that. So um, I don't have much to say about them, but those are two more projects that are getting added onto my list. And now it's time to talk about some fun. And that seems like a silly thing to say because all of my knitting and crocheting and spinning is fun for me, even if I'm doing it for, um, on a timeline or for an obligation or design or whatever, it's always fun. But I do want some like no stakes, low commitment, meditative, I don't have to think about anything knitting. And I have been looking forward to a couple of these projects for a really long time. And I want to make sure that they have their own space in my schedule and they don't get looked over and passed over for designs or other things. They deserve their time. And I have been planning on doing this stuff in the fall for so long. So let's talk about it. Firstly, the Thick Beach Comer Flares. As I mentioned before, I was originally planning on using Be A Pepper. I ended up not having the right amount of yarn. So I can dye more Be A Pepper for myself. But now I'm like, do I want two garments in Be A Pepper? Because I'm already using it for this other design. So I have to decide if I want to dye up some more Be A Pepper, or if I want to use a different yarn and then therefore dye up that colorway for my Thick Beach Glimmer Flares. Unfortunately, I really, really wanted to get these done for Rhinebeck. I don't know if it's gonna happen, which stinks. So I don't know. That's been on my list for a really long time, but I don't know if it's gonna happen, which stinks. I just said that. Anyway. That is project number one, but honestly, probably my lowest priority of all of my fun projects, if I'm being honest. I want them and I want to make them, but the other ones are calling to me slightly more. The next one that I have is I want to make a uh, muscle burra with this lovely Shetland 
that I spun during the Tour de Fleece. This was dyed by Malia Made It, and you can see it's this lovely gradient uh, that has happened from like a pinky purpley to a tealy blue and a green, and I think it would make a lovely muscle bra. This Shetland is unfortunately a little bit too scratchy for me to turn it into any kind of garment that I would wear anywhere other than my head. So, uh, I do have some travel coming up and I figured a one skein project is a great thing to bring along with me uh, when I need portable knitting. So that's going to be a priority. I think that will be really fun. And then I have two advent countdown kind of things that I need to work with. Need is a relative word. But anyway, I have my, this, this doesn't look like much, but this is my June, um, nope, July, <laughs> July countdown from The Little Wolf Knits. And this was the Moana inspired Island Girl countdown. I have 30 days of minis beautiful minis and I have not done anything with them yet. Now I designed the where you are wrap that went along with this countdown release and I was thinking that I might make that but then I was also talking to Brie and Brie said I think you will get you will find a lot of comfort in a Moana blanket and I was like I think you are so I think what I might do is modify my where you are wrap pattern, which um, should not be hard to do. It's just I'm going to make it basically like double wide and um, and go from there. I think I'm probably going to do just garter and not do the lace motifs. Although who knows, maybe I'll do, oh, it would be fun to do like maybe one at each end or something like that. That could be really pretty. I don't know. I think I'm going to take my Where You Are wrap and modify the heck out of it and basically get myself a blanket because I have the equivalent of six skeins of fingering weight yarn and I think I can get a blanket out of that. I just need to do some math and figure out, you know, width and length and all that kind of stuff. But I have been dying to get this cast on or get something with this countdown cast on for so long I just really really want those meditative stitches. I've always known I wanted to do something with like a garter or stuck in it in the round. Like I wanted it to be knit stitches <laughs> pretty much the whole time. Um, so I'm really excited. I've been waiting for the fall because I knew I wanted to work it in the fall. I can't wait to start caking up those yarns and just turning my brain off and going and working with the beautiful, amazing yarn. And also, I just got a fiber countdown again from Brie. This is the October countdown that is Beetlejuice inspired and I got 30 days. So that is 30 ounces of fiber. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in 30 days. Uh, based on my experience with Tour de Fleece, I think I will probably end up getting a little bit burnt out if I try to do it every day for 30 days. I don't know, though. I don't know. We will see. We'll see. I really wanted to try and open, like, start it sooner. Um, but... With the travel and stuff that I have going on, I feel like it would be silly to start it and do a couple of days and then um, travel and then come back and do a little bit. If I do start it early, don't worry, I won't be putting spoilers out there until October 1st when the countdown starts. But um, I kind of thought since I have it and I don't want to wait anymore, I might start it early. We'll see. Anyway, that is all I have for my... Um, for my making for the fall. That's interesting. I ended up with four things in each category. I had four projects that I'm currently working on that I really 
need to get finished. I had four design things that I are kind of either in progress or developing. And I have four hopeful, fun things. So that feels really good. I feel good. It feels nice too. I, you know, I felt so overwhelmed thinking about all the stuff that I wanted to do and when it was just floating around in my brain. But now I've written it down and I'm like, oh, you have four, four, and four. Four is such an easy number. Whereas before I was just kind of like, there was stuff all over the place in my head and I couldn't put anything together. And now I'm like, oh, you just have four things. Even though it's really four times three groups of things, but shh, don't tell my brain that. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for coming along with me as I organize my life and get myself situated and prepared for the fall. I hope you are looking forward to coming along with me over the next couple of months as I get these projects started or finished or both. <laughs> and uh, if you liked this and you want to see more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. And until next time, I will... I forgot what I say. And until next time, take care of you and I will see you later. Bye!